In another video, we showed some sampling methods for collecting invertebrates from the surface of vegetation. In this video, we take a look lower down and detail some methods for collecting ground invertebrates. Sieving helps you find invertebrates which live in the leaf litter. Any type of sieve can be used. It's best if the holes are between 4 and 10 millimetres in width. Also, have some pots to hand to catch any invertebrates you'd like to take a closer look at. Simply collect a sample of leaf litter and sieve the contents over a pale sheet or tray to see what invertebrates fall out. Dry material is easiest to sieve, but wet material might contain more invertebrates, so it's a good idea to try different conditions and environments. Pitfall traps are used for catching invertebrates that travel along the ground. A trap can be made by digging a small hole in the ground and sinking two plastic cups, one inside the other. The first cup will keep the pit intact, while the second cup holds your catch and can be removed. This method saves you from re-digging holes each time you check a trap. To prevent rain from drowning your specimens, or filling up the cups entirely and causing invertebrates to float away, make tiny drainage holes in both cups. It's also a good idea to create a roof for your traps using a few stones and a flat tile. Ideally, check the traps every 12 hours or sooner. Remove the inner cup from your trap, tip the contents into a white tray and see what you've found. As in the previous video, we are cheekily calling this method a visual assay, which is basically looking around. This time it might involve hefting stuff around, so be sure to observe correct handling procedures. The main thing you need for this method is your hands, or someone else's hands, but it's useful to have some collection pots and a pooter on standby to catch anything you want a closer look at. A hand lens or magnifying glass will also be useful. Various objects worth turning over to reveal potential invertebrate life include stones, logs, and any tin sheets that might have been put out for other creatures such as snakes, although obviously take care not to annoy any adders. Finally, it's once again worth looking out for tracks and signs of invertebrate life, including spiderwebs, slug trails, earthworm middens, and empty snail shells. This has been a brief introduction to three easy methods for sampling ground invertebrates. We hope you have fun giving them a go, and whatever you find, be sure to make a biological record. Thanks for watching.